Hello friends, today I am going to deliver a lecture on the topic of language. In this video lecture, we will discuss uh, the introduction of language, the definition of language, uh, the origin of language, different uh, theories related to the origin of language, the purpose of language and the very last, the conclusion of our entire lecture. So please stay tuned in this interesting lecture. Thank you. So guys, before we begin, I would like to clarify that all these points are what different people believe. These are not my opinions, neither do I agree with all of them. Okay. So we start with the introduction of language. Now see language comes from a Latin word lingua, which means tongue because those guys believed that the spoken language is spoken using tongue but again we have a question here do we only need our tongue to speak a language no we use tongue and lips and teeth and lungs and mouth roof which is called as heart palate and mouth base which is called as soft palate anyway now one of the things that distinguishes the man from other animals is the power of speech okay now it is also true that most animals and birds can utter cries which indicate their anger fear emotion hunger and so on but my question is that can they express all their feelings using language no 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 they cannot utter cries and their cries are very limited so we can say that only humans have well developed language or i should say languages there are more than 6000 languages in the world now these languages are so vast and almost infinite it is also believed that oral languages came first into existence and at a very later stage the man invented writing so first there were only sounds and meanings attached to it but as the time passed symbols also got attached to language those symbols are written language i wonder if there can be any language without sounds yes now the deaf and the dumb people use a language that language has no sounds so can it be a complete language i mean can the deaf and the dumb people express all their emotions and feelings using that sign language because it does not have sounds perhaps not but again can we express all our emotions and feelings using our spoken languages which have words which have sounds and symbols i don't think so when it comes to expression of feelings and emotions indeed words are very weak vehicle to carry emotions anyway at this point of time it would be a good idea to clarify that languages have words and images attached to it for example when i say pen you listen a sound okay and there is an image that uh, is developed into your brain of a pen so every word has a picture attached to it it's not possible that when i say a pen a picture of a donkey appears in your head okay or when i say a mobile uh, the picture of a woman appears in your brain no it's not that because every word has a particular picture attached to it in the same way the languages are dead and alive like 
human beings or animals or plants or trees okay why because languages are evolutionary they are not static they are not at rest on a particular stage they grow they become old and they die actually i say that languages uh, are evolutionary because new words keep coming in a language and in the same way some certain old words keep getting out of that language those words are we can say that expired words okay as i have said that the languages keep growing i can give actually an example a very wonderful example when we read the poetry by geoffrey chaucer the language he has used is very different from the english that we use today don't we and it's also very sure that after a thousand years or maybe after a hundred years the english that the people would use would be quite different from this english whatever stuff is right in today's context may be wrong maybe a thousand years ago or maybe in the future a thousand years later grammatically speaking we have a sentence are you okay and then a question mark this is a perfect sentence but when some people speak especially natives they say bro you're good now what does that mean this sentence has got no grammar but still it's in use and maybe after a few years it would be the right grammar who knows so it wouldn't be uh, inappropriate to say that languages are kind of strange there is one more thing that languages and dialect are uh, very much related languages can be different like english arabic hindi or german language but a language has dialects the english that is used in america is quite different from the english that we use in india or maybe that is used in australia so it is believed that after a distance of 40 miles even though the language is the same the dialect keeps changing now we will see the definition of language now before i start i would say that it's a very elusive topic and not uh, all the linguists agree on any one definition still we will discuss uh, the most common two definitions the first one is language is a system in which sounds and meanings are related for example there is a sound bird and then there is a meaning attached to it okay but this uh, definition was considered incomplete why because in this definition there is description of sounds and meanings so what about written symbols written symbols are the very base of a language the other definition was uh, given probably by the oxford dictionary uh, those guys said that language is a system of sounds words patterns used by humans to communicate thoughts and feelings this one looks better okay why do we communicate most of the time to express our feelings now we read different languages we speak them we listen to them and we write them still the question remains that how did the languages originate because we do not have any uh, proof of this answer there are certain theories so we will look in this topic the origin of language obviously nobody knows exactly when and how the language was invented and we do not know which was the first language which was invented maybe it was hindi maybe it was english or german or french or russian or italian we can't say it is believed that two million years ago it was invented in a raw form the the theory of evolution 
which is uh, somewhere in around 3 million years ago tells about homo sapien or modern man who started speaking although the first written language which is Sumerian uh, dates back to 3500 years before Christ era it is also believed that a particular gene which is called as language gene or fox p2 gene gave the humans the ability to talk and they started talking but do you really believe that that uh, humans were unable to talk and suddenly a, a kind of mutation a kind of change occurred to them and all of a sudden they started talking well i am not going to believe that are you now as i have said animals can also utter cries but they use very limited sounds so animals sounds are repetitive emotional and very few on the other hand man can express a very wide range of ideas and emotions through speech okay It's quite debatable how humans must have originated the language. I mean, for example, just think of ourselves like we are 10 guys and we live somewhere 2 million to 3 million years ago. We live in caves and uh, at night we come out of the caves, we are sitting around fire and we have to make a language. Suppose I see a stone and I tell my other friends, I tell you guys that okay, this thing is going to be called as a stone from today. Then how would have I said this message to you? And would you have believed that? Maybe you would have said, no, no, that thing is not a stone. That's going to be a horse. The other one would have said, no, that's going to be, say, a monkey and stuff like that. What I am trying to say is what was the fact that all these guys agreed upon these things that okay we agree with you because they could not read and write there was no language they had to make that language okay it's very complicated I think it's complicated than than we think of it although there are certain theories the very first theory is uh, the divine source of theory the divine source theory this theory believes that god gave languages as a gift to humans these guys don't take any kind of tension they just say okay we did not have a language and suddenly the god gave us this language if these guys are christians they believe that god made adam and adam named things if these guys are from hindu religion they say that goddess lakshmi gave us language and so i think there are also other religions who believe that language was a gift from the god the other theory natural sound source they believe that humans imitated natural sounds for example when people heard different objects they imitated those sounds now this theory is divided into bow wow theory and poo poo theory we are going to discuss them one by one so let's begin with bow wow theory now this sound bow wow this is the bark of a dog so the followers of this belief this theory they think that people noticed different sounds and they started imitating them okay for example a child sees his parents he looks at them and he imitates them uh, for example there is a crow and when he it says when it says ka ka the same words have been given in english language for the sound of a crow for the dog bow wow when a bee buzzes we say buzz or when a snake hisses we say hissing of a snake so this theory bowel theory believes that uh, the the words come from 
imitation of nature of animals and from stuff okay this theory got failed because things which don't make a sound also have names so how did these things get name this theory couldn't answer that now for example if this theory believes that a cock makes a sound cook a doodle do in english hindi guys think that the sound of a cock is kukulunku while germans think that a cock makes the sound of kikri ki now my question is that if humans imitated sounds do indian cocks and american cocks and german cocks have different sounds no definitely not so language uh, was not totally an imitation of uh, nature man has uh, to some extent uh, or like uh, made it or changed it whatever the next theory is yo he ho theory okay i know that this is kind of a funny name yo he ho and first when i heard about it i thought that this name was given by some chinese guy anyway the followers of this theory believe that when we are physically working then we we make different sounds for example when a woodcutter is cutting the wood after every strike on the wood he says ha huh, what is this sound for example you are walking and you hit your pinky finger against the table you say ouch when you eat something tasty you say hmm okay so these words are related to maybe some sort of physical work so my question is that if we learn it by grunting why didn't monkeys okay and when all uh, we are making different noises are we really physically working no sometimes we are just sitting in the couch and conversing with our friends for for hours at that time we are not physically working the next theory was poo poo theory once again this one is a funny name and actually this theory was proposed by charles darwin in his book descent of man which got published in 1871 but the name was not given by charles darwin this name poo poo theory was given by the critics of charles darwin Darwin believed that uh, we we utter different sounds in different emotions for example when we are in fear we we utter different sounds and when we are angry and when we are surprised and when we hit our toe against something so these sounds have something to do to our to our situation to our feelings but once again the question arises that why didn't animals start talking like humans did so this theory also got failed but it is also believed that this theory is the origin of all languages and 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 a lot of linguists believe it the next theory is ding dong theory now this theory proposes that objects have sounds and on the basis of this different sounds have been given to different words or things max muller was the guy a german scholar who proposed this theory he said that there is a rhythm in the movement of things or objects and on the basis of that rhythm on the basis of that movement these Uh, different sounds have been given to different objects for example the blowing wind through trees makes a special sound or the water flowing through a river makes some special sounds or uh, the savage people 
dancing around fire they they sing different kinds of songs so maybe that is related to some kind of movement this theory that's why i believe that ding dong fairy is about the rhythm about the movement there is one more theory the gesture theory it was proposed by wilhelm wudent these guys believe that the earliest method of communication was by signs and gestures even today we use gestures for example when we have to say come here unconsciously our hand moves in a specific way when we have to say keep quiet our forefinger comes somewhere close to our lips so even though we have well developed languages still we use gestures okay when we are surprised our eyes uh, kind of open wide to express the surprise so we can say that languages cannot be separated from gestures they are uh, kind of related okay so in olden days the gesture theory believes that every gesture was accompanied by a sound and slowly those gestures uh, got separated somehow but still today we use some of the gestures for example if you are using any language of the world when you have to say up your finger automatically shows upwards okay so this is the stuff that uh, these guys try to explain wilhelm wouldn't and their followers after discussing all these theories let's come to the purpose of language what is the purpose of language the very first is to give and take information okay we keep asking different questions what's your name what time is it what what do you like what do you not like and stuff like that two to express emotions three for aesthetic reasons there is a poet who is going and he sees a beautiful flower and suddenly he he composes a beautiful poem and he and he says it okay so to express aesthetic uh, feelings and the last one to relieve tension there is a small boy and there is uh, a very healthy and muscular boy who tortures that small boy now this a uh, skinny guy cannot physically fight with him so he says a few words which i wouldn't like to say here and after saying these words this skinny guy is is relieved he feels a little uh, tension free now guys here comes the most important part of this lecture the conclusion we can conclude that language is a system of sounds meanings written symbols and pictures attached to it it's very hard to say when were languages originated actually all the theories have their own pros and cons maybe all theories have some points which are true in the origin of language but there is one thing which is very sure that oral form of languages came first and after a lot of years came the written form languages live and die very much like animals and plants and trees and these are only humans who can express almost every idea using language other animals have limited sound guys here we come to an end if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do it now i hope you will like the video share it with your friends and family and leave a comment below okay thank you we'll see you soon bye bye and take care